taking a peek at the infotainment system inside of the Kia Carnival. Now this is the larger 12.3 inch version that you're gonna find in a number of other Kia vehicles. It's available in the higher trim levels, but if you're in a Kia Carnival that has the smaller eight inch screen instead, you can find a walkthrough video down in the description of this video. But this is the home screen you're typically gonna be met with. You've got your basic date information, time, and then if you've got media playing, whether or not the media is playing or media is off. Swiping across gets you into this main menu. Along the very top there, you've got various drivers. So essentially a user profile setting that we can have set up. You can click through in order to be able to adjust the driver name, change the profile image. You can link Kia Connect, which is the Kia cell phone app as well, to an individual profile, or you can delete. Big benefit of having unique profiles set up is that if you've got phones set up for different drivers, if you've got presets and maps and things like that, you can have it logged to each individual profile that you've got set up. You can easily change a user if you want to that way. You can put it into a guest account, whatever the case may be. So it's very simple going that way. And then you can also adjust the language out as well. Along the very top gets you to the home screen. This button is going to either turn the display off. So if you want more of a calming screen instead, or you can edit the home icon. So you can go this way to edit the home icons, or if you just do a press and hold, that's gonna launch you into the option to be able to edit the home, home icons as well. And all you have to do is just press and hold until it becomes loose. And then you can just drag and drop in order to create your own personal layout there. So if you prefer to listen to certain things, or if you want certain things in the main screen, like radio, media, whatever the case may be, you can customize it to make it your own. And then you hit the reset button there if you wanted to bring it back to the factory default instead. Along the very top, you've also got the user manual, so you'd be able to scan your QR, the QR code using your phone in order to launch into the owner's manual. Straightforward. Along the top there, you can see the current time, current date, and then whether or not you're connected to Kia services. Map, you've got there as well, and this thing, factory navigation, incredibly useful. It's nice. Now, if you're in the smaller screen, you don't have factory navigation, it's not a big deal because you can still connect to Android and iPhone devices to use Google Maps, Apple Maps, and Waze. And I'll show you how you can do that in just a bit. But you've got a nice full screen there. Along the side, you can push there if you wanted to do a little split screen. So you've got your maps and then a few other pieces of information there as well. Pushing back to go to that full screen. You've also got the option of selecting which heading you're using whether or not you get navigation volume. So do you want the voice to come up? So for an upcoming turn, do you want to hear a voice or do you just want to have a sound effect? So upcoming turn versus just your basic sound effect there instead versus guidance will be at this volume. So you've got the flexibility of being able to adjust each of these priority volume means it's going to lower the audio in order for you to be able to listen to upcoming turns. You can go plus minus this way if you wanted to, but it's also got pinch to zoom capabilities. You can also have auto mode. So what the auto mode does, it's automatically going to zoom you in or out, depending on how far away you are from your end destination. You can push the menu button there in order to see nearby information for point of interest icons. So if you wanted to see gas stations, things like that, that would be available. Back to menu, you can save certain things. So if you wanted to save your current location on the map as your home address, work address, or favorite, you've got that flexibility. From there, you can also toggle the display off and then there was one other one, traffic display info. So it's useful because as you're traveling on different highways, roads, whatever the case may be, it's gonna let you know if there's any traffic based off of the route that you're taking. So you can see there along the highway, we're green right now, so it's pretty safe to travel. You can search for addresses this way. You can search by GPS coordinates by using the latitude first, longitude second. You can search by an address or a point of interest icon. So if you wanted to search for, let's say Tim Hortons, we can. I'm just going to select one that's a bit further away. You can set it as a destination and you can find either the best or the closest distance instead. But let's select another one of these random ones, set it as a destination. And from there, you've got two different routes that are available in order to get to the end destination. So it's a matter of which one do you want to choose? You can start guidance. You can add in a waypoint. So let's say part way or before you get to the Tim Hortons, you wanted to either drop into a different address to pick somebody up if you wanted to fill up fuel, whatever the case may be, that's where you're going in order to add in additional waypoints. And then you can avoid certain things on your route. Like you want to avoid ferries, toll roads, carpool lanes, and things like that. You've got that flexibility or just start guidance. You can press this in order to see what's going on for either the arrival time or the time remaining. So a matter of preference, I prefer the arrival time. You can reroute if you want to, or you can close. 
And then if your phone is connected and there's a phone number that's associated with the listing, you'd also be able to call them that way instead. Canceling the root out is straightforward. Two seconds there and it's fully canceled. And that's honestly the basics of using factory navigation inside of this thing with one other exception. And that other exception is going to be navigation menu. So navigation menu gives you a ton of other options here. So you can hit the search button there to get back to be able to do a search. You can look for point of interest icons, so gas stations, parking, cafes, swipe across for a number of other things. And as you move through, it's gonna let you know what's close by to where you are. Back out. And you can see previous destinations, saved addresses, key dealerships. If you have an active route going, you can cancel it, look at the overview or edit it if you want, and also see traffic. You can also enter in home or work addresses. And the benefit there is that you could press the voice command prompt on the steering wheel and say things like navigate home, navigate to work, and it's based off of whatever addresses you have saved there. Some additional settings, and there are a lot of things here. So vehicle speed, you can have it show right on the map as you're driving. Do you want to have your traffic information shown, as well as nearby point of interest icons, and which icons do you want showing up? Fuel price information can be useful. Guidance information, do you want to avoid ferries, toll roads, carpool lanes? And then nothing overly exciting there, there, detailed guidance, not overly basics for border crossing information. Do you want to show the route overview while you're stopped? So one of the benefits there is that rather than just having the next turn or if you're going straight, whatever the case may be, when the vehicle stopped, it's going to zoom out to show you the full route that you're taking. And then previous destinations, do you want to save them? And then do you also want to show previous destinations after your vehicle started up? So obviously if this was your car, you'd probably want to save your destinations, but for general safety, you could just deselect that one. And the big benefit there is that all of your previously visited addresses will automatically delete. But if you want to save them, that's where you're going in order to be able to save your, uh, your previous destinations. Alerts, nothing exciting there. Map, map mode. So do you want to have the heading in 3D, 2D, etc.? Do you want to show buildings and auto scale means it's automatically going to zoom in and out as you get closer to the destinations or upcoming turns. Map size font. Do you want to be a larger or a smaller font just depending on your own vision. Map color. I love the black map, but that's a matter of preference because if we go back to the map for a second there, so you can see it's black instead. But if we go back to the map settings and we're going to go settings there, map color versus milk. So you can kind of see how it's going to look there. I just, I, yeah, I'm a bigger fan of just having that darker navigation there, or the darker map, I should say. It's a matter of preference. Your Star Trekky symbol, you can also adjust what color you're going to use. And then the auto scale, nothing exciting there. Auto recenter map, user data, GPS information. That's useful. So latitude, longitude. So if you ever go off road or if you're not sure where you are, pop a tire, puncture a tire, you could give your GPS coordinates that way just to let people know where you are. But that's the well, basics, but that's how you use factory navigation inside of the screen. And then there's one thing you might have noticed there is that along the very bottom, you've also got a few additional buttons. So you can hot button press in order to get into your map or your navigation settings there instead. Pretty neat. Back. Oh to the screen. Next up is going to be adding in a phone. Turn Bluetooth on from your device in order to search. On your device, select the name that matches vehicle name on the screen. Okay, so from here all we're going to do is pop open the phone. You're going to go to Bluetooth and you're just waiting for the carnival to come up. There we go, and it's shown up. Pin, perfect. So we're going to pair. There we go. Do you want to allow contacts and favorites to sync up? This is not my car, so I'm going to say no to that one. And as you can see, fully connected there as well. You've got your contacts if you allow that to download. You've got your dial pad there as well. Download was because the reason why it said that is because I selected no. But you can see the phone name, what your current connection status is, along with your battery level. And then you can press there if you wanted to do a little split screen here as well. Or just go for your full screen and then you can see your available messages. Now, you could stop here and just use your phone for Bluetooth connection for making phone calls and then for playing media and things like that. Because if we go into media for a second, you can see there that we've got a podcast that's now playing. List to see whether or not you've got a library there for music, podcast, radio, and things like that. So you could listen and stream your audio that way if you'd like to. But you've also got the flexibility of being able to set up Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. So let's connect through. 
USB cable inside of this larger screen. So you do have Android Auto Apple CarPlay support, but you have to use a cable that does have the little data icon there. So if the cable doesn't have the data icon, it's not a data transfer cable, it's strictly gonna be a charge cable. And you wanna insert it into the USB type A port. From there, you're just plugging yourself in. Perfect. Do you want to use Carnival while the CarPlay is, or do you want to use CarPlay, I should say, while the Carnival's locked? Yes, you want to do that. And as you can see there, connected, hit OK, and you've got CarPlay. So select through and, oh, would you look at that? Fully connected, but that is beautiful full screen. I love that. So this is going to be full screen Apple CarPlay. You can see your current time, connection level, which map was open last, which audio application was open last, which miscellaneous application was last opened. And then you can either press this to go into your icon view or back home, but you could also just swipe across in order to get to the icon view instead. You've got the map that was open last there. And then from there, some basic information, if you had podcast or music playing, and then if you had an upcoming event, that would show up there as well. From here, let's go maps. So this is Apple Maps, but Apple Maps, nice and responsive, no pinch to zoom capability. You've got to go in and out this way to zoom. Look at your current location, 2D, 3D, etc. Zoom in and out. You can search for addresses, look at previous destinations. And then Google Maps is going to be the same thing. So Google Maps, no pinch to zoom capability, and it's got me where? There we go, perfect. Takes a second to load up and done. You can move around there. You could search for addresses. You can press there in order to do things for route options. So avoid highways, toll roads, and ferries. You can change out the map color, look at your satellite map, traffic, north up, so your basic heading, and then also adjust volume settings there too. And then Waze is the same idea, so it doesn't have pinch to zoom capability. You've got to go this way to zoom in and out if you're using Waze. You can also press this to let people know of police, crashes, traffic hazards, and things like that. You can search for addresses. And one nice thing about Apple CarPlay is that you can also push and hold the voice command prompt if you wanted to activate your Siri Assistant. And that's the command prompt on the steering wheel, which is great. From there, not really a ton. Like you've got Live One, which is a radio app, Hoopla, which is a library app, VLC, which is a music app, YouTube Music. Like there are so many things that you can use through this screen. But the one thing that it doesn't support is video playback. So you can use YouTube Music and VLC for audio, but you can't watch video through this screen. There's no factory option to do it. You can push, push this button in order to get back to the home screen if you want to, but it's nice and simple. And then just launch back into CarPlay that way instead. It's great. And one nice thing is that on the phone, you can connect through to your settings. And then inside of your settings, you've got the option of going back into general, CarPlay, and then you're gonna find your vehicle. You can forget it. You can allow CarPlay while the phone's locked or you can customize. So let's say if you wanted to customize the screen so that your podcasts are first, also by your audiobooks, and then you wanted Google Maps up over there, you've got the flexibility to do that. You can also delete if you wanted to remove certain things from the vehicle. So if you're not a fan of using any of these apps, it fully removes them, but they are added on the bottom of the screen there, so you could add them back in if you want to. If you're not a fan of what layout you've set up, you can press the reset button on your phone, and that's gonna reset it back to the factory default screen there instead. That's straightforward. Now, you do have the flexibility of easily turning this thing off if you want to, or you, you saw earlier, you can push there in order to go back to that main Kia screen instead. If you go into setup now, the other one here is device connections. So moving through your, device, your active device connections, you can see there, currently connected over CarPlay. You can launch back for your Bluetooth prompts, system information in order to change the vehicle name. So if you didn't want it to be Carnival, you wanted it to set up something different, you've got the flexibility to be able to change it out there. And then your projection settings, you can't adjust anything because you're currently connected over USB. So let's disconnect for a second. Go into phone settings, Apple CarPlay. You can enable or disable CarPlay. So if you wanted to be charging up, but you don't want to launch CarPlay, you can disable CarPlay that way if you want to. Straightforward. Yes, let's enable. And then do you want to use split screen? So split screen is useful and I want to show you how that looks. So let's just reconnect for CarPlay. It's going to take a second to launch in. Go. let's go back home, launch into CarPlay, and then you've got this little split screen instead. Where that comes into play is doing this. So you could go through, 
some basic settings inside of your vehicle rather than having full screen CarPlay. So if you wanted to have CarPlay set up for phone calls and audio, but you wanted to have this set up for factory navigation, you can do a mix and match there as well. And it goes the opposite way. Like if you wanted your phone connected for your maps on your phone, but you wanted to use this in order to be able to do things like look at your weather, if you had your audio set up and things like that, you could have the audio running from the system itself rather than through your phone, which is kind of neat. And then you saw there, just disconnect that way if you wanted to disconnect yourself from CarPlay. So let's say you set up Apple devices inside of the Kia Carnival. Setting up Android devices is the exact same process. So, so you're gonna go back home into your setup, device connections, device connections, and then we're in this main screen. You can add the device or you can delete. So I wanna add in a new device. From your device in order to search on your device, select the name that matches vehicle name and on the screen. Just waiting for Carnival to show up. Perfect, pins match up, so let's pair. There we go. And as you can see there, both phones are connected. And one cool thing is that you can select priority. So who's gonna be connected to first as there's multiple phones connected. But one even better thing is that you can have one phone set up for phone calls, one or two for audio. So you can kind of do a mix and match of all of these things. You can either set up for Android Auto or Apple CarPlay, but for any of these, you can do a nice mix and match there instead. You can go back home and launch into the phone and currently connected to the iPhone 14 Pro. So let's do a swap out to the Galaxy instead. There we go. Currently connected to the Galaxy instead, so the Android device, and you can swap back if you've got multiple phones connected. Now, similar to the iPhone side of things, Android devices. Download is starting. Some phones require additional confirmation. Yeah, so that's gonna say no in a second just because I selected no, but if you select yes because it's your car, then it's gonna download your contacts and messages and things like that. And then, very similar to the Apple side of things, Android devices are USB on this specific screen for Android Auto. And again, you wanna make sure that you're using a data cable in order to be able to connect, going through the data port down in the center stack. And you're just gonna plug yourself in. And reading USB, Android Auto would like to set up. So we're gonna hit next. Okay, oh. <laughs> there we go, perfect. That's what I was waiting for. So you can see there, fully connected, which is great. And I mean, you saw there, so we're split screen now inside of this thing rather than a full screen, but you can go full screen by pushing map. And all of a sudden your map is full screen. But this is nice because it's full pinch to zoom capability on the Android side of things and it's super responsive. You can search for addresses. You can press there in order to be able to do things like avoid certain things in your route. So motorways, toll roads, ferries, things like that. Back home, you can also mute out your guidance prompts, which heading do you want to use, north, up, overview. You can zoom in and out that way as well. You can push the little home icon there to get to this little split screen, or push this to get to an icon view instead. But it's a very similar setup to the iPhone side of things. So you've got your current connection level, your battery percentage and the time, your map, podcasts, your phone, and then you've also got the Google Assistant, so you can push that way if you wanted to use your Google Assistant, but you could also do a press and hold on the steering wheel in order to be able to activate your Google Assistant that way instead. Pushing this button gives you to this little screen. You can use Waze through this device as well, which is amazing, but if you're using an Android device and Waze is not showing up, I put a video together explaining how to get it set up, and you can find that link down in the description of this video, but it's very straightforward. And then, so you can also customize this thing. And all you're gonna do on your phone is search for Android Auto. And once Android Auto pops up, you're looking Android Auto settings and you're gonna connect through. You can look at previously connected cars and you can customize the launcher. So let's say if you're not a fan of the layout here, all you're gonna do is just press and hold and you can drag around instead in order to create that perfect setup that you'd like. You can deselect certain apps if you want to. You can add them back in. As I mentioned, just do a press and hold in order to adjust but it's not dynamic the same way that it was on the iPhone side of things. So any changes that you make here can be made, but what you have to do is actually disconnect from Android Auto first, then you're gonna launch back in, and let's launch back into Android Auto, and you can see there, boom. So all of the changes that we've made there are now set up perfectly right through the system here as well. You can push the Kia button in order to get back home. You saw there, Android Auto to launch back in instead. That's nice, nice and simple.
No, that's the basics of setting up an Android device inside of the Kia Carnival. It, as I mentioned, works the exact same way as the Apple side of things. From here, if you hop into setup, device connections, and then device connections again, so you've got both phones that we've connected. As I mentioned, you can kind of do a mix and match, figure out which one gets connection priority by going this way if you want to. You can do a mix and match of who's going to be connected for the phone, for audio, all that fun stuff. Then you can also easily delete devices. You can select whichever ones you want deleted, delete, and there you go. Both phones are now the deleted, so it's that simple setting up Android Auto, Apple CarPlay inside this vehicle. From here, phone projections, straightforward. You've also got voice memos. So you've got the flexibility of being able to record memos directly to the vehicle if you want to. You can adjust the mic volume. You've got a valet mode that'll give limitations to the vehicle. Passenger talk is a neat one because what's this, what this is going to do, it might sound echoey in here right now because it's picking up the microphones around the vehicle and then shooting it into the second row. So very useful if you've got kids in the back seat. So rather than screaming at them, you can say passenger talk and they'll be able to hear you infinitely easier because it'll lower the volume for them to hear. There's also passenger view. And when you press that, that's going to show you what's going on in the second and the third row. So very useful if you've got kids that are kind of playing with each other or they're going crazy, you can see what's going on. And then you can jump into passenger talk as well in order to be able to tell them that they should be calming down instead. Quiet mode's a neat one because what that's going to do is it's only going to play volume for the first row. So if you've got kids that are in the back seat sleeping, you can have quiet mode going in order for the first row audio to be playing only. Rear climate gives you the flexibility of adjusting climate for the rear. So whether or not it's on, what temperature do you want to have it set to? You can have it auto go. Do you want it going to face feet, combination of the above? You can also turn it off completely there if you want to. HD radio data traffic information. There's basic HD radio data for traffic information. Then you can go into the setup, which gives you a boatload of other options. But before I get there, there's one other thing. Well, a few other things. There's radio. So hopping in the radio there, you've got AM, FM, Sirius XM as well. And then you mentioned you've got Bluetooth, Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, USB stick with MP3s on there that also is available. So you've got a ton of different media options that are available inside the vehicle. But if you wanted to, you could change stations a few different ways. So you could kind of tune stations this way if you want. You can push there in order to be able to adjust stations out instead. And then you've also got your, that's what I was looking for, channel list. So you can see all of the available stations and that's for everything. So AM, FM, whoo. All right, so one of the big benefits there is that if you're new to an area and you're not sure which stations are available, you can connect through and select and see which stations are available based off of your geographic region. When you're on a station you want to save, you can also save it as a preset there. And you can save or delete however many presets that you'd like to. Very useful. And it's the same for FM, Sirius XM, and then your presets. So we've got all of these presets that have been set up. You can also reorder them or you can delete certain presets as well. So if you're not a fan of listening to certain stations, you can select, deselect it, whichever ones, and then you can delete the selected presets there instead. You can also reorder your presets there. So if you're not a fan of the order, you can just grab along the side, the little hamburger icon, and you can drag up and down in order to create that perfect position for you for your presets. That's the basics there. Like there's a lot of info, but I mean, it's super straightforward at the same time. Pause record for different stations as well. Just to base off of channel name, channel number for Sirius XM specifically. And then going back, let's actually go back home. And you've got radio and then media. So media I showed you earlier, you've got FM, AM, Sirius XM, there's Bluetooth, USB, Sounds of Nature, Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, like there are a ton of different options for media. Actually, Sound of Nature is a pretty neat one. So let's, yeah, there we go. So that's kind of nice if you wanted to have more of those subtle relaxing sounds, if kids are driving you nuts or if you're stuck in traffic instead, you've got the flexibility of kind of being able to adjust that out instead. Kia Connect gives you a few other options. So you can look at calendar, weather, vehicle diagnostics, and then different additional settings. There is a pairing app that goes with your phones, so whether that's an Android or an iPhone as well, where you'll be able to do things like remote start, unlock and lock the doors on top of that if there are any notifications that are available for the vehicle. And then you can also pull up the QR code in order to scan through to your user manual as well. 
and then hopping into our setup. Setup, there are a ton of other options here, but let's go through some basics. So clicking through vehicle settings gives you a ton of options here. Driver convenience settings, and any one of these things, if you click through, it drives you further into that specific menu. So starting off with convenience settings, there's highway drive assist and then highway auto speed change. So what that's going to do is based off of your GPS location and also speed sign recognition, it can automatically adjust your speed on the fly. That's the same idea with speed limit assist. Do you want to have it so that it can automatically adjust your vehicle speed based off of the vehicle speed or the speed on the road, I should say? Do you want to get a warning or do you want nothing to happen? And that's specifically if you're using the adaptive cruise control system there nothing exciting warning methods if you start to veer over into a lane without signaling it's going to give you a little bit of a steering wheel vibration almost like you're running over rumble pavement it's honestly going to feel like there's something up with the alignment in your vehicle that's not the case it's literally just a haptic warning because you're turning into another lane without signaling you can turn all of these warnings off as well but the priority is so if you've got a warning that's coming on because let's say you're somebody's in your blind spot and you're trying to change lanes it's going to lower all of the additional volume and that's the same way with the parking sensors so as you go to back up if you get back if you're backing up and there's something in behind you there it's going to lower your radio volume or other volume so that you can hear the warnings there as well driver attention warning if you start to veer over too many times without signaling start to veer over into other lanes it's going to tell you eventually that you should probably take a break so you can turn that setting off and then lead departure warnings neat because if you're stopped at a red light and then the car in front of you starts driving or even on the highway and then the car in front of you starts driving and you haven't started driving it's going to let you know right in the cluster that the leading vehicle has taken off so you should probably start driving and pay attention as well but you can delete deselect these if you want to forward safety if the vehicle senses that there's a potential collision it can automatically brake for you it can give you a warning or it can do nothing I usually just recommend keeping that active assist on for that pre-collision braking. Lane safety gives you a few options as well. So the assist is going to keep you nice and balanced in your lane. Blind spot safety. So the blind spot view monitor inside of the cluster screen, if you push the left or the right arrow, so the turn stick there, go left or right, it's going to show you what's going on in your side view mirrors. It's great. And then there's also safe exit assist. So if you're going to leave your vehicle and there's somebody on the side, it can let you know, give you warnings, whatever the case may be. Park sensing, there's a few options there for your camera. So the park distance warning, parking lines and things like that. So you've got all of your parking lines available there. So whether or not any of these things show up or not, that's gonna be a matter of personal preference. I'm personally a fan of those parking lines, but I know not everybody is a fan of them. I just prefer, so as you're backing up, you can see that you're going right in between the lines. And then display settings, you can adjust the brightness of that rear view camera as well. I think that's it. Oh, the other one here is going to be the rear active assist. So if you're going to back up and there's an obstacle behind you, it's automatically gonna break for you. It'll give you a warning or it'll do nothing. And then cross traffic safety, if you're backing up and somebody's coming perpendicular, so from the left or right, it's gonna let you know of a potential collision. There's forward safety, works the exact same way, which we've already seen these options. Driver attention warning, which we've already seen. So this is essentially going to be like a full overview. But I mean, as you saw there, you can dive in to specific options as well. So there are a ton of different options, lane safety settings and things like that. So if you wanted to adjust an individual setting, you've got the flexibility to do it rather than kind of moving through and trying to figure out where everything is. So Kia's just outlined it very nicely moving through the cluster screen. So there's a few different options that you've got there. So you can adjust the brightness. I always just recommend keeping it on the max brightness. Blue light filter is useful because later on at night, it's automatically going to dim the lights inside of the cluster screen to make it a little bit easier on your eyes. You can have it set up automatically. So when it gets too dark, it'll automatically do it for you. Or you can schedule when you want that blue light filter to come on. And then it's what's the strength of the blue light filter. So you can kind of see there just be able to make it out but the screen kind of gets a little bit red almost instead because it's getting rid of some of the harsher blue lights and then camera settings what do you want showing up there so the park distance warnings display settings which we've already seen so you see there some of the settings are duplicated in different areas moving into climate you can have the vehicle automatically recirculate air for you options for automatic ventilation so dehumidify and then you can schedule the ventilation and what that's going to do is it's going to automatically pull air from the inside from the outside in in order to make sure that you've got fresh cabin air and then automatic defrog defrost it's useful and then you can also lock the rear controls 
So if the people that are in the second row are fighting over the controls, you've got the flexibility to be able to lock it out so only the person inside the first row can adjust the climate. For the seats, because these are the VIP seats, you've also got the flexibility of being able to adjust the recline for the backrest inside of the second row for the driver passenger side. And that's specifically going to be for the VIP seats that are in the SX trim level. Lights that are available, so your turn signal. Do you wanna have either one flash, so it, it says off, but it's a single flash, three flashes, five or seven. Welcome mirror and lights for later on at night. Headlight delay, so do you want the lamps to stay on for 15 seconds after you lock the door? And then high beam assist. What that one's going to do is it's automatically going to have the high beams on, and then as an, the vehicle recognizes somebody's oncoming, it's automatically going to dim them before turning them back on again. And from there, you've got door settings. Automatically lock when the vehicle is up to speed, so essentially as you start driving or when you shift, and same idea with automatic unlock. Do you want to have the doors automatically unlock when you shift to park, when you turn the vehicle off, or do you just want the doors to never automatically unlock? And then for remote power lock, you can also have it so that when you press the unlock button for a few seconds, it's automatically going to open up the sliding door and the lift gate, strictly the sliding door or nothing instead. Two press unlock means you have to press the unlock button twice on the key fob in order for the doors to open up. And then power smart lift gate. There we go. So the speed in which the, the lift gate is going to open or close, do you want it fast or slower? And then how high open or closed do you want it to be? So let's say if your garage goes up to a certain point, you can automatically have it go up to a certain point maximum if you want, or you can also have a user selectable height. So there's a button on the lift gate itself. You can select it your own unique height, press and hold for a few seconds in order for it to remember that height, or you can just go full open. And there's also the smart lift gate and then the lift gate auto close. So as long as you've got the key fob on you, you've also got the flexibility of doing a couple unique things. So let's hop outside and I'll show you how a few things work. So as long as you've got the key fob on you, you have to get about 10 to 15 feet away, about 10 to 15 seconds or so. So let's say you go shopping, go grab kids, you've got a handful of groceries, kids, whatever the case may be. As long as the key fob's on you, on your pocket, bags, whatever the case may be, you're just gonna walk forward towards the back end and you're just gonna hang out for a second, but watch this, yeah. See that? It's opening and there we go. Such a useful feature. You can back away. You can close a few different ways as well. So, I mean, we're backing away right now. As you can see, it's auto closing for us too, which is amazing. There is a button on the inside there you can push in order to stop that close process from happening. Then you can also open and close the lift gate from the back end here. But one other cool feature about this thing is that not only does it have the auto open feature for the trunk area of the vehicle, but it also has it for the second row doors. So same idea, you're locked. You wanna make sure you get about 10 to 15 feet away for 10 to 15 seconds. And then from there, you're just gonna to walk towards the vehicle. Again, key fob in your pocket, your bag, whatever the case may be. See there? It's automatically gonna open up whichever door you're closest to. Such a useful feature. Love that. And then just manual close there. That's a pretty neat process. I love that it's the open and close, but you do have the flexibility of turning the auto close off on the lift gate. There's another button that you can push in order to toggle that thing off. Then there are some added convenience settings. Oil change reminders. So if you need to reset your oil, you can just press the reset button there in order for the oil life reset indicator to be reset for you there. Nice and simple. You've also got the wireless charge system information and then rear wiper when in reverse. So big benefit of that rear wiper in reverse is that if it's enabled, if you've got your front windshield wipers going, you go into reverse, it's automatically gonna turn the rear wiper on for you as well. And that's the basics of your vehicle settings there. Navigation settings, which we've already seen all of these things. A series of different sound settings. So you can adjust a few things, dynamic speed compensated volume. So what that's going to do is if you go faster or slower, it's automatically going to adjust the volume for you. Startup volume limiter. If you've got the radio cranked and then you go to start the vehicle up, it's going to, it's going to turn the volume down just so that it's not blasting at you. The position of the audio. Do you want it focusing on the driver, passenger, people in the back if you want to, or you can go center focus for everybody. 
And then this is typically what I'd recommend. So the treble cranked by a bit, mid-range at zero, and the bass cranked by a couple points. That's generally going to give you really good audio inside of the Carnival. And then there are so many different things that you can adjust for guidance volumes, navigation volumes, volume priorities specifically for the guidance. And like these, every individual option you can customize. Radio noise, something exciting there, driving assistant settings, which we've already seen, and then connected devices for Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, specifically for media and then for voice guidance. So what level do you want each of these options to be set to maximum? User profiles, which we've already seen, so multiple users are available. Voice recognition gives you the flexibility of doing certain things. So you'd be able to do things like change songs, radio stations, you can navigate using Here your voice. There are some available commands. There are. In this screen, voice is not recognized. <laughs> so many things that you can do inside of this thing. But I honestly recommend just going through the list there so you can see what you can do. Because like I said, there are, Here are some available so commands. many things In this screen, that you can voice do. Is not recognized. Open and close the lift gate, turn the heated steering wheel on or off. There are so many things. And then prompts means that we won't get as many notifications. So if you say change to 94.9 FM, it'll automatically do it. And then it won't tell you, it'll just do it instead. And then you can also lock the rear voice recognition as well. Screen layout gives you options. So you can link the cluster screen look to the individual drive mode if you want to, or you can just have it locked out permanently to different modes instead. Or you can go dynamic, which gives you a really unique look inside of the cluster. Like I love that blue look instead. And then later on at night, it actually dims it and makes it dark. It's really neat. Screensaver. So when your display's off, how do you want it to look? So you've got the analog clock, a digital clock, or nothing. And it's just a completely naked screen. I prefer the analog clock. And then you can also choose a few different watch faces as well. So choose whichever one, back and off. I think that looks pretty sharp. And then split screen options. There are a ton of different things that are available inside of the split screen. So it's which, which options are enabled and then which order do you want them enabled as well? And there, there are three unique buttons. So there's two on the steering wheel and then there's one down the center stack there as well. So right next to the seek button. So what do these things do? So the custom button there, do you want it to enter quiet mode? Do you want nothing to happen? Do you want passenger view and things like that? The custom steering wheel button. So what I would have just done there is I've shot it up to passenger view. So when I push that button now, it should launch into the camera in the back. Perfect. So you can kind of flex, you can customize that a little bit if you want to. From there, there are two additional buttons on the steering wheel. Same idea. What do you want it to do when you push the button? So you've got the flexibility of being able to adjust these things out instead. Kia Connect, you can activate the services. So again, that's the option of using certain, uh, certain things on your phone, whether that's Android or iPhone devices. And that's going to be for things like remote starting right, and then unlocking, locking the doors and things like that. And then there's a series of general settings. So you've got your basic information. So what software versions you're using, basic system information. So how much storage is available date and time setting automatically. So some things you might notice through the screen are grayed out and that's because you've got it set for automatic. So if you deselect automatic, you can then adjust the date and the time as necessary, or you can let the vehicle determine that instead. If you prefer the military time, so that 24 hour mode, you've got the flexibility to adjust either way. And then you can also enter daylight savings time by clicking that way instead. Languages, you've got English, French, Spanish, and Korean. And this is going to, the language itself is going to be based off of your, uh, your geographic region. So if you've picked up a carnival and you're on the other side of the world, like Albania, you will have Albanian as an option for your language, but they're region specific. So if you're in North America, you wouldn't be able to get certain languages installed on the screen. It's essentially whatever's set based off of your geographic region. You can adjust the keyboard type. So do you want the QWERTY keyboard versus the ABCD instead? You can also adjust your keyboard language. Do you want your measurement units to be in kilometers or miles per hour? And because this is the digital cluster screen, it's also going to be adjusting what's going on in the cluster. Do you want to be Celsius or Fahrenheit? And then if we go to miles, it's going to be miles per gallon or the UK version. So either US or UK gallons. And then tire pressure, PSI, KPA, or bar. And then media options, media off at startup. No, I like having the media going when I turn the vehicle on. Do you want to continue to play media when the vehicle's turned off? 
useful because rather than having the audio turn off when you before you open up a door, you can turn the vehicle off and then media will just keep on playing until that door is opened up. And then reset, you can delete the profile or you can reset all, which is gonna bring the screen back to the factory default there instead. And that is everything. So I know that's a lot of information, but that's everything that you need to know about the infotainment system inside of the Kia Carnival.